All right, we got SCP-507, Reluctant Dementia Armbar. I know a lot of people have been telling me do this one, but, like, the Vulcan version. Babe, babe, hey, hey, we here. We here, all right? Terrified man huddles in the corner, heart pounding and teeth chattering. He sees them coming towards him, huge eight-legged figures, ten feet tall at least, with eight black soulless eyes that seem to stare hungrily at I don't him. Do spiders, it's bro. like something out of a nightmare. Giant man-eating spiders everywhere. They approach the man, fangs dripping with venom. But just as they're about to strike, he vanishes. He won't be spider food today, but for this truly unlucky guy, his ordeal is far from over. Let's rewind. When life gets a little too boring, we all daydream about getting away. Maybe you imagine sitting on a tropical beach, or camping in the mountains and breathing in the fresh air. Some of the more adventurous types with a vivid imagination might daydream about visiting a parallel universe. Who wouldn't want the chance to see what life is like in another dimension? Of course, it would only be fun to go there if you could control where you went and when you could come back. Without any control over it, the ability to hop back and forth between dimensions would turn from a blessing to a curse. Just ask SCP-507. SCP-507, unlike most other SCPs, is a seemingly normal human man. He has blonde hair, mm, green that's that. eyes, Yo, that's that, uh... and unrecognizable accent. And Bro, no other hell? features. I, yo, that... I didn't even know you could do this. What type of YouTube feature is this? He. I didn't even know you could do that, bro. What is that? The hell. It might make him stand out. But no, nah, I was about to say, bro, this that one boy from Taylor Foundation when he went to uh, London. Facts. Okay. Word. Okay, I see it. He looks perfectly average, like a stranger you'd pass on the street and never give a second thought to. What sets him apart is not a physical attribute, but rather an ability that he has yet to develop a firm grasp on. He is a dimension hopper, with no control over where he goes or when he'll get back. After appearing on the grounds of a mental treatment facility with no identification, rambling about a world of giant spiders, SCP-507 was admitted to the hospital and sedated for his own safety. He would spend several months in treatment for a variety of supposed disorders, but once he became aware of his surroundings, he attempted to escape the hospital multiple times. During these escape attempts, he often eluded hospital staff by mysteriously disappearing and reappearing in seemingly impossible places such as behind locked doors or in rooms blocked off from the rest of the hospital. These disappearances and reappearances seem to be, contrary to what the hospital staff first believed, beyond his control. So, okay. That nigga, he can not only jump dimensions, but he can deadass just teleport, like regular teleportation. Like, he teleport wherever he wants. That's fire. That's fire. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's fire. The SCP Foundation became aware of the strange phenomena surrounding 507, and he was removed from the hospital and brought to an SCP Foundation facility. Once there, the nature of his abilities became much clearer. SCP-507 is able to, without intent or even knowledge that it is about to occur, shift from this reality to another alternate reality. After some time there, with the amount of time varying from case to case, he will shift back to this reality. He has been known to shift realities while sleeping, in the middle of a sentence, and even while bathing or going to the bathroom. The shifts are unpredictable, and there is no telling what kind of horrors he will encounter in the new dimension where he ends up, leading to 507 having seen some very strange things, even by SCP Foundation standards. During one of his shifts, 507 found himself in a pitch black room filled with the sound of muted breathing. Using a flashlight he had been given by the Foundation, he looked around and found that he was not alone. In the room with him was a man, wearing a black suit and sunglasses, with a frightening, inhumanly wide smile. Is that, um, the smiling with man a cigarette? leaned in towards 507 so close that their faces nearly touched and said, Back so soon? Terrified, 507 fired several rounds from a Foundation-issued pistol, then curled up in the corner of the room until he shifted back to our reality. This would not be the last time that he encountered the Smiling Man. According to Document 507-3B, 
which details all of 507 shifts into other realities. 507 You know who he kind you know who he kind of built which like Which details all of 5 You know this nigga kind of built like bro. 07 shifts in Oh god. Oh yeah, there go the dimension hopper right there. Oh god. What's his name, bro? I don't even remember boy name, bro. Boy from Sunny with a chance. Yo, that ass, bro. The resemblance on Candy, bro. Right there. Boy right there. Yo, what's his name? Hold on, hold on. Let me look at the cast real quick. What's the what's the cast? I'm about to find his name, bro. I'm about to find his name. I'm about to find his name. Doug Broshu. This bull right here, bro. We found a dimension hopper. Yo, he lost a lot of weight, bro. He look good, bro. He look good now. Okay, my boy. My boy look good. But that's not the one we talking about. We talking about these one. <laughs> we talking about these one, bro. We talking about these one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dimension hopper. Crazy. Into other realities. 507 was found in a Midwestern cornfield by Foundation staff with brown liquid on his cheek. In his hand, he held a human heart with the words, I need you, written on it in the same brown liquid. Before he shifted back and landed in the cornfield, 507 shifted to a pitch black room filled with the sound of muffled crying. He turned on his flashlight, taking note of his surroundings, and found himself face to face with the smiling man once again. The smiling man had brown liquid leaking from around its sunglasses, which it wiped onto 507's cheek. Upon further examination, 507 saw several bullet holes in the smiling man's suit, leaking the same brown liquid. He attempted to fire his pistol like he had the previous time, but it did not fire. As the smiling man began to approach him, 507 turned and ran. He ran for about 10 minutes before finding a corner where he stayed huddled once again until he shifted back. The Smiling Man is not the only nightmare that SCP-507 has encountered on- I ain't gonna count. I was gonna say the boy was smearing his face with shit, but I was like, let me not be immature about it. I don't know what that black- I don't know what other brown oozing shit coming at your body. This travels. During another shift, 507 described appearing in a small room filled with dried corpses, a single window, and a flickering light hanging from a ceiling. While attempting to wait out his time in the room, he discovered that the corpses were capable of movement. Whenever the room was in darkness, the corpses would pose themselves Hell like living no. people. When he looked out the window, the corpses would join him and look out the window with him. When he sat down, they would sit with him in a circle. 507 attempted to pass time by falling asleep, but was unable to do so. Though many of his experiences were disturbing, only one of 507's documented shifts resulted in him requesting a memory wipe from the SCP Foundation. On this one, he found himself in the maternity wing of a large hospital. A creature, dressed like a nurse, approached 507 and told him that he was upsetting the other patients and that it was time to start the operation. Oh, 507 no. was then wrapped in a straitjacket and wheeled into an operating room. After the straitjacket was taken off, 507 grabbed a chair and swung it wildly at the creatures to keep them at bay until he shifted back. When he asked to describe the appearance of the nurse creature, 507 began screaming in terror and was unable to provide a coherent description. He attempted to provide a drawing of the creature, but was only able to produce a series of jagged lines. Following this encounter, his request for a memory wipe was denied. Other shifts included going to a world where every surface was covered with an unidentifiable mold, a land of icy tundras populated by aggressive bears, and one place that he refused to describe beyond repeating the phrase, so many spiders. Not all know. of the worlds that, that 507 has encountered are frightening. Some are simply strange and unusual. During one shift, he found himself on a large basketball court, where six other individuals were playing a game of basketball. I ain't gonna catch that guy right now. I don't care what species you get your ankles took the same, my nigga. You say you don't got no ankles. All right, watch this. See? What are you talking basketball. about? There were two humans, two insectoid creatures, one creature resembling a squid, 
and one hovering yellow sphere with eight arms. When 507 asked where he was, he was informed that he had arrived at the All Species Sports Center. During another shift, 507 found himself in a world made entirely of gelatin. During yet another shift, he appeared in a large auditorium filled with 50,000 other Dimension Hoppers who were holding a political rally for the People's Dimension Hopper Republic. Working with the Republic over the course of two weeks, 507 helped to overthrow the United States government and establish a new what one run hell? by Dimension Hoppers. Yo. SCP-507 was elected representative of Massachusetts, but just before he could introduce his first official piece of legislation, he shifted back to our reality. One day at the facility, a particularly unusual event involving SCP-507 occurred, the events of which were documented in Interview 507-G. During a regular check-in, it was discovered that there were somehow two identical versions of SCP-507 in its room. They had apparently each arrived in the room independently and had been talking to one another for about half an hour before being discovered. These two versions were referred to as 507-A and 507-B. When prompted for an explanation, 507-B explained that there were more than one version of SCP-507 afflicted with uncontrollable dimension hopping. The doctor inquired as to which one of the two was the visitor, but the two declined to answer, uh -oh. fearing that this knowledge would cause the Foundation to view one of them as expendable. The two had multiple shared experiences that they related to the doctor, including both having encounters with the smiling man. During the interview, 507-B disappeared mid-sentence and did not reappear. The doctor asked 507-A about identifiable differences between his and his double's realities. 507-A explained that in 507-B's world, President Lincoln was killed by his vice president, whereas in 507-A's world, he was killed by General Lee. This revelation made it clear that neither 507-A nor 507-B were native to this reality. After this was revealed, 507-A was terminated and examined. No biological reason for 507's ability to hop from dimension to dimension was found, though it was discovered that several pieces of 507 will shift dimensions along with the rest of the body. Three days after this interview was conducted, the correct SCP-507 reappeared, with no knowledge of his doppelgangers or what became of them. SCP-507 is classified as safe, meaning he doesn't require any real effort to contain. He's also safe in the more literal sense, in that he poses no threat to anyone else. The only person in danger in the presence of SCP-507 is himself, as he has been exposed to many dangerous conditions during his reality shifts, and it's never known whether 507's next shift will end up being his last. With the cause That's of his crazy. shifts still being unknown, there is nothing that the Foundation can do to prevent them. All they can do is monitor him, and provide him with the items that might ensure his safety in the future. Like a handgun loaded with rubber bullets, a tank of air, a high-intensity flashlight, a week of ration packs, a pair of binoculars, a tracking collar, and a camera. The tracking collar allows the Foundation to recover 507 when he shifts back to our reality, in a location other than the containment facility. The rest of the equipment was granted at his request, based on obstacles that he encountered in other dimensions. Due to his docile nature, 507 is given freedom to move about the facility, but when he leaves his private room, an agent must go with him to document any shifts that might occur. No one is allowed to touch SCP-507, though, if it has been more than two weeks since a shift occurred. This policy stems from an incident in which an agent who was touching 507's shoulder at the time of a shift was taken with him Damn. and did not return. Damn. When he is not shifting, SCP-507 lives a relatively normal life at the facility. He is allowed his own computer with internet access and can meet with other safe or Euclid-class SCPs that are not infectious or detrimental to his health. 507 has expressed an interest in the unusual and paranormal, and has enjoyed meeting with other SCPs, including a request to visit SCP-082 for a vacation. So far, all of these meetings have occurred without incident. Due to his anomalous shifting, SCP-507 will never be able to live a normal life. 
Unless he stops shifting, he will likely spend the rest of his days bouncing between unknown dimensions and his containment facility. Just like so much else about him, his relationship to his special talent is a bit of a paradox. He has the ability to go anywhere, to see things no other person on Earth has ever seen. However, because he cannot control it, cannot stop it, no matter how far away he can travel, he will never truly be free. Now go check out SCP-1000 Bigfoot and SCP-066 Eric's Damn, the Dementia Hopper. He down bad, for sure. He down bad, for sure. I mean, if you teleporting all crazy like those, right? And teleporting all crazy and you can't control it. Ain't really much to say. That's it. For real, for real. I mean, it's cool that he can talk to other SCPs and whatnot, but... Hey, bro, they are kind of messed up for killing the other two doppelgangers for no reason. But besides that, I mean, hey, bro, it was a it was a it was a good SCP. It was a good SCP.